All right, we're good. Good. Okay, here we go. This is uh, episode two, I believe. Confessions of a Program Hopper, episode number two. So, Chris, much appreciated for sharing your story. Yeah, it's good to be here. I'm excited. Where are you located? Uh, Wake Forest, North Carolina. Oh, really? Yes. Man, I'm a fan of North Carolina. I lived in Virginia Beach for about 11 years and would poke down in North Carolina every now and then. I, I was a fan of the Carolinas. Yeah, it's great out here. It's funny because I actually grew up in Washington and I know that's where you're from. So. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Yeah, currently currently living in Washington, actually from Massachusetts. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, so I was, are you, oh, but you were from Washington State or you were from there and lived in Washington State? Yeah, I kind of bounced around when I was little. My dad was military, um, but okay. most of our time was spent at uh, uh, Fort Lewis in Washington State, so. Okay. Uh, yeah, I was there from sixth grade all the way through college. So, interesting. How how many times when you were little did you move around? A ton. Really? <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, I was probably in eight or nine different schools by the time I was in sixth grade. So, yeah, no we, we jumped around quite a bit. Yeah. Did he um, do a full twenty years? Yep, he did twenty years. Yep. Um, and he was in the he was in the army. So we we basically went between. North Carolina and Fort Lewis like five or six times because those were the two bases that that he was stationed out of um but we also lived in Japan for three years um so we were we were in Okinawa and we lived in Texas for a year lived in Pennsylvania for a year so yeah I've been all over the map man <laughs> that's I got a couple of questions about that uh out of all those places do you look back on one as a favorite um yeah, I mean, just because I spent most of the time in Washington, I I would say that's my favorite. Okay. But if I had to pick like where I want to live now, it wouldn't be Washington. So right. <laughs> yeah, just the weather, the traffic, you know, all that oh, stuff. Oh yeah. Just, I, yeah. I'm in agreement with you, my friend. I'm in agreement with you. Uh, but at how, the time I enjoyed it. So how was that experience? You know, I've got three kids now. Do you have kids? Yeah, I do too. Yep. How was that experience of moving around so much as a kid, you know, because from an outsider's perspective, it would seem disruptive and, and an overall maybe negative experience, but that maybe there's a positive, but I didn't live it. You lived it. So what was that experience like? Yeah, overall, I think it was pretty positive. Like, oh, OK, I, I kind of enjoyed it. I mean, yeah, it sucked. Like you never really made like super good friends because you knew mm. you were going to leave in a year or two. But, you know, you still played sports and hung out with the kids in your classes and things like that. And, you know, when it was time to leave, yeah, I was a little sad or whatever, but I would, I would do it again for sure. Okay. Um, okay. I thought, I thought it was a very beneficial thing and it made me, you know, be able to make friends pretty quick. I got into a pretty good <laughs> routine of how to make that happen. So um, yes, I can yeah, see I think overall it was a pretty positive experience. So were you always involved in sports? Yeah. Yeah. I always played multiple things throughout the year so baseball soccer football whatever so i was always kept busy anyway so i didn't really have time to hang out with people <laughs> which of those sports were you the best at uh baseball i played baseball through college so oh did you really yeah yeah what position shortstop oh my goodness i find that to be absolutely terrifying the shortstop <laughs> and shortstop and third base with uh, third base is way worse than shortstop i could is it really base. oh yeah yeah there's no chance i would ever play third <laughs> <laughs> oh man that's that yeah. weird and where were your strengths was it uh in fielding throwing was it at the at yeah i was definitely I was definitely more of a fielder i'm i'm not the biggest guy in the world so i wasn't like a power hitting shortstop or anything so it was all fielding, speed, stealing bases. That was pretty much my my thing. So, interesting. Oh, that's cool. And, and after all of that repetitive movement, uh, you know, like how are your shoulders and things? Are you okay from sports? Are you beat up? Yeah, I'm a little beat up. I had to have elbow surgery um, in high school. Um, I had to have Tommy John surgery, so uh, I got a new ligament in my elbow. Um, my right shoulder is a little bit stiffer you know, then my left shoulder just from all the throwing and stuff. But other than that, I held up pretty good. No major injuries, um, broken nose, broken eye socket from getting hit with a ball once. But other than that, not too bad. <laughs> Were you a part of any bench clearing brawls? Oh, man. No, never bench clearing. There was one <laughs> small scuffle where a couple guys got into it and um, 
Yeah, unfortunately, I had the bright idea of taking the catcher on with all of his gear, and I'm probably <laughs> the shortest guy in the field, so it didn't work out too well for me. But yeah, nothing too crazy. And do you still follow baseball? Oh yeah, yeah, I'm a big fan. And who's who's your team? Um, unfortunately, I'm a White Sox fan who are about to break the record for most losses in a season. So it's been a rough season. Are they really? Yes, yes, it's uh, it's been rough. Yeah, but we'll pers- persevere. Is is it just a bad year or is it a cycle of bad years that are occurring? Uh it's a bad organization. So <laughs> it's gonna be <laughs> it's gonna be a while before they turn it around. <laughs> hey, but you're hanging in there. You're not a fair weather fan, huh? I'm not a fair weather fan, no. And I still watch games on TV, even though they're, you know, the worst team in baseball. I just I just really like the game. So but do people see with the hat on, they just say, My apologies. Well, most people, because it's kind of like an alternate, like a red hat, yeah, most people it think out. it's yeah. the Red Sox. And so I'm like, yeah, I just go along with it. I'm like, yeah, Red Sox, go. Yeah, no, it's just White Sox. I bury my my sadness deep within. Oh, that's amazing. Well, maybe give me a little background. You know, when I reached out to the Lynchman community, because I thought this would be an interesting uh, topic, you know, you you wrote right in there, you know, kind of like, yeah, program hopper, that sounds like me. So why why did that resonate with you? And maybe you know, kind of walk us through your fitness journey. Yeah. So um, I think it pretty much all started just because my dad was in the military and very active. And I would hang out with him and his team um, when they would go to, you know, the gym and work out, you know, as, as young as 10 years old, I was in there hanging out with them and, you know, getting into the gym scene and, you know, PT when they would go do PT early in the morning and stuff. So I think it all started then as far as just kind of getting into it. Um, And then around high school, it was kind of your typical, you know, bro muscle and fitness magazine, you know, seeing Flex Wheeler, Jay Cutler and all these dudes on, you know, Ronnie Coleman's on the cover and you start reading those things, you know, on a daily basis and you start doing their workouts. Like it's going to be, you know, the same for you that, that it is for them. And, Hundred percent, man. I my my you know Bible when I was younger, I had the the Arnold Schwarzenegger like encyclopedia of uh, yeah, building yeah. or whatnot, and I would just you know figure yeah. that I'd turn out just like Schwarzenegger. Used to watch Pumping Iron every day after school, yeah, I mean, trying, to, trying to get big, get fired up, yeah, yeah, yep. exactly. So yeah, so I mean, I was kind of in that mindset pretty much, you know, all the way high school and college. It changed a little bit in college just because of baseball and stuff. We had to do our own workouts, but. Uh, a little bit more like speed and agility stuff, but I still lifted like bodybuilder style programming, even though I really wasn't supposed to just because that's kind of what I liked and what I was used to. So, Mm. um, so that was kind of the initial start of it. And then I did get into CrossFit basically in college or just after college. Um, Okay. And what year do you think that was? That was 2006 ish. Okay. How old are you? I am 38. 38. Okay. All right. So you, you dip your toe in the CrossFit waters as you're approaching 40, somewhere around the 26. Okay. 2006. Gotcha. Yeah. And so that was, I mainly just followed like the main site and just kind of did their work out of the day. Oh, I'm sorry. You got my number. You're, you're, you're 38 now. And so you're, you're 2006. You were, you were obviously significantly younger. Sorry about yeah, that. Yeah. I was like mid My math was all crazy. Mid to upper twenties. Yeah. 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 So I, I, I kind of followed mid, uh, just the, the main website, you know, crossfit.com and followed their workout of the day and started kind of watching, you know, some of the CrossFit athletes and stuff like that. It really wasn't that big back then, you know, it was kind of mm-hmm. still kind of new and people didn't really know what it was, but I liked the variety of it. Like I thought it was, it was a change, you know, I had been doing kind of similar workouts for eight or nine years in a row, as far as like just bodybuilding type programs and, I kind of just wanted to change. And so that was, that was a big draw to me. But man, 2006, that was a while ago. I mean, that would put you in some serious, like OG status of when you first started to, to experiment with it. I mean, we're coming up on 20 years. You know, to- well, yeah, true. If I would have stuck with it, I guess. Sure, I would sure, be sure. Held an OG. <laughs> so, so yeah. maybe, you know, that's the next point, you know, obviously that implies that you didn't, you know, so where, where you started to experiment with it you liked the variety but obviously it didn't stick where did you deviate to yeah so probably after a year of doing uh, my own stuff just following the the main site i did join a crossfit gym um and i probably i was probably there for almost a year and a half okay and there were some things i liked 
you know, the community and stuff was great. The people that I met there was great, but um, I just felt that the programming wasn't, I wasn't really gaining anything. Like mm. all of my strength stuff stayed the same. Interesting. Um, I basically looked the same, if not worse, you know, after doing that for a year and a half. Um, yes, my cardio probably increased quite a bit, but when I was in my mid twenties, I didn't really care about my cardio. <laughs> you know, I wanted to be strong and I wanted to look good. That was essentially yep. my two goals. And so I felt like at that point, it wasn't really serving my goals because it wasn't, you know, what I was after at that point. Okay. Um, so you leave so the, the affiliate and now you're just, you know, on your own in the wild. Yeah, just on my own. And so, um, you know, one of my you know, classmates or I can't remember if I was still in school at that point or not, but um, he was kind of a big strength guy. And okay. I was like, yeah, I, I feel like my lifts have, you know, kind of diminished from doing this over the last year and a half. I'd like to get strong again, as strong as I can. Um, and so we, he got me into um, a program called 531 um and a little bit of a program called juggernaut and those are two kind of like strength building only programs like yeah literally, right. very well known in the strength in the strength world yeah literally you just go in the gym and do your one or two lifts for the for the day and you're done you know it's it's very straightforward it's very easy to follow um but it's also yeah, very good for those strength. you know i know a, a little bit well i know about five three one but not so much is, is juggernaut just powerlifting or what lifts do they incorporate? Yeah, it's mo it's mostly powerlifting, but okay. they do a little bit more um, accessory work as gotcha. well. So they do percentages off of accessory work as well as kind of the main lifts. So okay. it's, it's a little bit more, a um, little bit more volume as well. But Did you play with 531 for a while and then switch over to Juggernaut or were you kind of mixing and matching both at the same time? Initially, I was kind of mixing and matching because I didn't really know what I was doing. It was yeah, kind of, kind of naive in that, but, um, I did a lot of, I basically did five, three, one for like my main lifts, you know, bench squat, deadlift and, and military press. Um, and then I did a lot of the accessory work from juggernaut stuff. So I, see. I was okay. kind of mixing and matching. Okay. Gotcha. And how long did you do that? Probably about two years. Okay. Yeah. It was a hardcore two years of just five, three, one, man, just smashing weights in the gym. And, you know, so left the CrossFit gym, not happy with what was happening, at least definitely from the strength side and the, and the appearance side as well. Not so concerned with conditioning. Now you're all in on the lifting for two years. So one would assume you're all in on a serious strength deal for two years that everything in, in that area improved. Is that safe to say? Yeah, I got super strong. <laughs> nice. Okay, cool. Very cool. It worked. It worked. <laughs> yes. You know, it turns out that whatever you do all the time should get better. Exactly. Yeah. I couldn't walk up the stairs without getting out of breath, but I was strong as hell. So, and is, is, I mean, is that just like a fun exaggeration or to like, seriously, like you notice, like you got winded easy. Um, I did notice it. It wasn't that dramatic, but, sure, I did sure. notice but I've it. heard, I've heard mm -hmm. people say that that's not far off to be quite honest with you. Yeah. It wouldn't surprise me. Like I was still playing like rec baseball and stuff, you know, after school and things like that. And like during the games, I would notice, like if I had to run from first to third or something, I would be like hands on my knees, bent over, trying to catch my breath, you know, something that wouldn't have happened three or four years before that. So interesting. And, you know, the fascinating thing not to go down a rabbit hole about that is I guess it just depends upon what you're using that strength for. Yeah. If you're using that strength for a powerlifting meet, which is not very metabolically demanding then you can probably realize the overwhelming majority of the gains that you made in those lifts. But then you enter some sort of sport, real life, four hours of yard work, like whatever it is. And then all of a sudden, whatever deadlift and squat you used to have, now when you're sucking wind, you're just significantly weaker because you're so metabolically just deconditioned that you're like, where did my deadlift go? You know, like it's a, yeah. again, it just, I think it just depends upon what you want to do with that strength honestly. Yeah, that's true. And I never really had any notion of competing. I never really wanted to compete or anything, which is weird for somebody doing like a strength program. Like most people well, are going to want to, you know, yeah, but, compete but honestly, or... I think, yes, I think you. I think that's true. But I also think people just love to lift, you know, like whether they're going to compete or not, you know, you're in there with your buds, you get some good music on and lifting heavy weights is fun. So I think it's, just, I think it's wildly popular to be honest yeah. with you. And truth be told, 
you know, I don't hate on powerlifters at all, right? Nothing but respect for them. You're doing beautiful, functional, highly beneficial lifts. I mean, it's, it's not a bad thing to focus on, quite frankly, depending upon what your goals are. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it does have, you know, application. I mean, you know, when you improve deadlift, squat, pressing motions, all that stuff, like it's going to carry over to real life. Sure. You know, there's things that you're going to benefit from for sure. Like not going to hurt you. No, it's not going to hurt you. Yeah. So, it's, I mean, see, I enjoyed it. Yeah. You did that for a couple of years and did you just lose interest or get bored or, you know, what, what made the switch? Yeah. It's boring, man. It's a boring program. Like it works and it's, it'll make you strong and it does everything that it, they say that it does, but mm. it is super boring. Like every other day, you're either going to do a bench, a squat, a deadlift, and you're going to do percentage increases of two and a half percent of those things for a year. Like it's, right, right. it is pretty boring. You know, there's no, there's no thrill to it. There's no excitement. Um, and you can only mess around with accessory stuff so much to make it, you know, kind of exciting. Um, at, that, at that point in time in your life, doing the, doing the five through one and the juggernaut stuff, um, you know, wherever you were in your fitness journey and your strength conditioning and IQ and all that, you know, and again, there's also just not everybody has to pursue this optimal fitness, right? Like we're all free to do whatever the heck we want. But at that phase in your life, did you equate like fitness and strength being the same thing? Like the stronger I get, the fitter that I am, you know, or was, or could you, in your mind, did you know that there was more to being fit than just being strong and some of those areas weren't being hit you know like what was going on in your head yeah i think a couple of things um around that time i was in pt school i'm a physical therapist and so okay. um at that time i didn't have enough time to train like i was training with my 531 stuff originally so how i kind of started a training session like that like the 5 through how long you'd be in the gym well with eight minute rest sets you know <laughs> it's, gotcha. yeah it, it's it's usually only about an hour i mean okay. you can knock it out in an hour and okay. it's usually only four days a week so it's not that bad you know gotcha. um but i i felt at that time that i was lacking in other departments so i was bored and i was like man you know i'm doing this pt stuff and everyone's preaching lifestyle stuff and like i can barely walk up the stairs so mm. so i kind of kept up with the um, main strength lifts of five, three, one. So I would do that. And then I would do a CrossFit workout afterwards. Okay. So I kind of started to combine them, um, after that to help with, you know, just some conditioning stuff and, you know, get some different movements under my belt. So not a bad route to go. Yeah. But it was a lot, like it was rough, you know, you spend yeah, 45 yeah. minutes, you know, trying to go all out strength wise. And then you're like, Oh geez, do I really want to do burpees after this? Like, I don't, Right. I don't want to. So <laughs> I would say it was 50% effort at most on most of those workouts. So, well, it's funny. That's, I mean, that's what we say all the time. It's really hard to just pour your heart and soul into what should be two significant, substantial efforts in the same day. Like something's going to get shortchanged. Yeah. Exactly. Or you're going to plateau or burn out. Like something's going to happen unless you're an Android. Yeah, exactly. So you play with your own version of Strength Plus Metcon for a while. How long do you think you did that? not very long maybe six months okay <laughs> it okay. was just too much work too much effort um and what, what happened after that did you have to make a choice between the two you know like, well, well yeah so at that time too is right around when i had my first kid my son and life changed. and yeah and all of a sudden i got you know kind of hit in the face with one not really having any time to work out because i have a newborn number two just all the stress that comes with that and changing your lifestyle and you know figuring out overall kind of what your priorities are as far as health and fitness goes mm. and so it kind of went from you know this guy who just wants to be strong and look good to now i kind of want to be there when he graduates high school you know so it started to kind of transition into more of a longevity thing and mm. what's best for longevity is it me being able to deadlift as much as i can or is it me being a well-conditioned person to be as healthy as i can so that i can you know do activities with him and you know possibly be around for a little bit longer and what year was you, when was this what year was your son born uh he was born in 2015 2015 okay so in 2015 you've got this kind of new chapter of your life that begins and 
as we all do, you start to see things through a different lens. Things are suddenly priorities that weren't priorities beforehand. And you're like, okay, it's a time to take stock of what I got going on and make sure I'm actually moving towards what I say that my goals are now. And so, you know, 2015 with this, what, nine years ago. So what you'd finish your own strength plus Metcon version, your son's born, minimal free time. What does fitness become at that phase? So that was basically me building a garage gym <laughs> to eliminate oh, the traveling from into, you know, the gyms and things like that. So I figure if I have as much stuff as I can in the garage, I'll be, you know, a little bit easier to get a workout in with an unexpected schedule change and those kinds of things. So smart, yeah. smart. And were you just creating your own workouts at that point in time or, you know, what were you, what were you? Yeah, I was kind of just doing some random stuff. It, a lot of it was drawing from, you know, the CrossFit gyms that I was at. I was kind of following yeah. some of their stuff. Um, not necessarily their programming, but just workouts that we had done and, and things like that. And just kind of putting them together. Um, you know, I had some knowledge of that. I, by that time I graduated PT school. I, you know, I had my, um, my CSCS as well. So, you know, okay. I, I, I know a little bit about, kind of how to put a, a basic program together as far as that goes. So, okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, sure. I was kind of just doing my own thing and it, it was still very similar to the CrossFit gym that I was at where they would do, you know, a little bit more of a, a heavier lift and then they would do some kind of, you know, metabolic conditioning after that. It was very similar to that. And how long did you do that before? And how long did you do that? And then what was the next evolution so i probably did that for four or five years like oh, okay up until up until i basically i found linchpin maybe you know a year ago so, okay yeah and what, what made you was it you know what made you look somewhere else if you know if you were you know kind of content or i'm assuming mm -hmm. that you were content in your garage doing what you were doing yeah the main thing was just um um just the the ease of it because gotcha. you know i would have to sit down every six weeks and kind of plan out six weeks which I understand. It took me a while. Like I might not be smart enough to do it, but no, it, takes it took a me a long time to, to figure out, you know, how I want to approach the next two months or whatever. So I was like, well, I'm sure there's somebody out there that already has, you know, this program that I can just follow and pull up on my phone real quick and just go do it, you know? Um, and so then I, you know, kind of searched around and then that's when I found um, you guys and, and uh, you know, kind of read all the reviews and stuff like that. And I was like, Oh, you know, it sounds like a good thing. Let's, let's give it a shot. So. And how, you know, it's made my life easier. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm glad to hear that. And, and just, yeah, what's, what has been that experience like? I mean, cause you've done so many different things from just powerlifting, just bodybuilding style to attending yeah. a gym that did strength plus Metcon to you doing your own strength plus Metcon. And now you've offloaded that to somebody else, you know, that we, you know, we you know, respect the heavy days. We don't do the strength plus Metcon. We'll just sprint on some days. You could do a heavy day at a high heart rate. Like what's, that might be jarring and shocking based upon what you're used to, you know, but you've stayed here for a year. So what's that transition been like in the whole nine yards? Yeah. I mean, it's been positive in a lot of ways. Um, one, like I said, it's just super easy to follow Two, I really like, you know, the different options that you have on there as far as like scaling stuff, because, you know, when I would come up with workouts on my own, there was, you know, you just do this, you know, there's no other, <laughs> you, you can't skip this. You can't skip this. And plus I would never program, you know, things that I didn't want to do. Like I right, never, I would have never done another burpee in my life if, you know, I was programming my own stuff, you know? So what about 45 minutes on the air bike? Well, I'm about to do that today actually, because I couldn't get it in yesterday. So I'll let you know after that, but um, I would actually I, rather do 45 on the air bike than burpees all day. So okay. <laughs> Yeah. My, my apologies. Yeah. And, um, what, I guess, um, how, what do you normally do? Do you normally find yourself doing the prescribed, the wild card, the dumbbell option? Do you take one of those and kind of modify it a bit? Yeah. Depending on what the workout is. I mean, I, I probably do 50% of them, you know, RX, um, is my guess. And then depending on what the movement is, I have some things that I'm just not good at, um, you and me both. overhead, overhead squatting, you know, those kinds of things, just you know, shoulder, shoulder mobility and Amen. all that. Um, I will vary the heck out of, you know, one of those if I have to. Yes, sir. Right. Well, so I kind of piece, piece do. it together day by day, depending on what the workout is, but it's good to have, you know, options on there instead of just trying to power through it. 
you mentioned burpees and I guess just for, for giggles, if you had, you know, two buckets, one of those things that you loved and one of those things that you hated, what are the things that you love and what are the things that you hate? Well, any of the strength days I love just because of my background. So. <laughs> uh, those are always good. Um, yeah. Burpees and thrusters, I think are my two, my two arch nemesis that mm. just make my stomach turn when I see them. So I just, I've never been good at thrusters. I don't, I don't feel like I can get a good rack position and mm. it just burns my lung to, to hell. So yeah, I, my, I don't have good shoulders either. My front rack position, I've been working on it for like 20 years and it's still terrible. You know, yeah. it, is, it is. And not that anybody would like want to do dumbbell thrusters instead of barbell thrusters, but I sometimes feel like it's just, I hate to call a thruster comfortable, but it's almost more comfortable with the rack position. So I'll, I'll actually grab dumbbells a lot if thrusters come up you know versus the barbell even though they kind of suck more but they're kind yeah. of better for my shoulder in a weird way yeah um is there any folks <clears throat> be it in the private facebook group with the btw squad feature that you kind of keep an eye on or peruse or uh dude i try not to look at it too much because there's some crazy people in there that throw out some insane workout numbers and i'm just like they're there's on a different a they're on a different planet than i am i'm like you got what time? Like, did you start halfway through the the workout or because then I'm looking at my watch and I'm like, dude, I don't, I don't have that in me. Like, <laughs> Do you have any sense? Do you have any sense of what you might get on the air bike in 45 minutes? I ha actually have no idea. I actually just, that was probably the last piece of equipment I bought was the air bike. That was maybe a month and a half ago. So okay. I didn't even have one up until that point. Okay, man. Cause there was just some people you know, and they take pictures of their monitor. They're not lying. They take pictures. Yeah. Of their yeah. And I'm just like, what? yeah, I just, I can't believe some of the stuff that I see on there. It's amazing. No. Like, and then some of the people, again, I know they're not trying to make me feel like I want to jump off a bridge, yeah. but they'll be like, I'm thinking about this guy, uh, John, who's a law enforcement officer. And he posted like 450 calories on his assault bike. And he's like, you know, made it a low intensity day. I'm like, a low intensity day yeah. you got to, that would be like if my mm -hmm. family was being held hostage <laughs> and they said we're going to execute them unless you sell your soul I, mean, I might get that score maybe and he's yeah. like that was a low intensity day there's a video of him like riding the air bike in his living room like chatting to his son like chatting i'm like what yeah, yeah so I don't, I don't know man it's crazy there's <laughs> just some some crazy people out there but uh well i yeah. guess you know what would be your you know, kind of, you've done a lot of stuff. I mean, from on your own to, to, to different styles of training to different phases of life, the whole nine yards, what would be your advice or recommendation to maybe somebody who is in a challenging phase of life, you know, just had a kid, you know, whatever is there, like difficulty work times minimal, like what are your lessons learned for somebody that just feels like they're struggling to get off the couch and even start? Yeah. I mean, I think just do something like I have, a, I had a lot of days, in the past, especially when I was big into it, like I felt that if I didn't go a hundred percent all the time for that hour, that I might as well just have sat on the couch and done nothing. Mm. And now, you know, if for some reason somebody barges in to the garage and has a family emergency, you know, 10 minutes into the workout, Hey, at least I did those 10 minutes. You know, I, I, I checked the box for the day. I, I did the best I could. Um, you know, it was a lot better than me just sitting around doing nothing. And so I would say, don't be so afraid to commit to something a hundred percent that like, if you don't do it a hundred percent, you are a complete failure. Like mm -hmm. just anything you can do, just, even if you walk to the mailbox and back, it's better than if you, you know, rode your four wheeler there. I don't know, like, 100%. Just, you know, do something, just get started. hundred percent. Well, uh, Chris, much, much appreciated, man. I appreciate your time. I appreciate you sharing your story and, and of course, you know, being a part of Lynchpin. Yeah, man, it's, it's been fun. I've enjoyed it so far minus the, uh, burpees and thrusters, but, uh, we'll, uh, we'll give it another month. And for anybody watching or listening, send good vibes to the white Sox. Oh God. Yeah. <laughs> There's no hope. <laughs> Don't even worry about it. <laughs> All right, brother. I will see you online. Thanks again. All right, man. Appreciate it.